Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 41 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in this tutorial, let's actually build on the content that we learned in the previous one. In the previous tutorial, I talked about Fourier transform, and now let's actually create an image filter using uh, the Fourier transformed uh, signal of our input image. Now, just to give you a quick reminder, again, Fourier transform is you're converting a signal from one domain to a different domain, uh, from time domain in this example to a frequency domain. So same thing with an image. You have an image, you convert them into a frequency domain. And uh, uh, why do we need to do that? Again, uh, let me skip through these just to show you the final example. We, the advantage of doing that is instead of doing convolutional based filtering, where you multiply these pixel values with a kernel, we are converting this into Fourier space and then playing with the pixels in the Fourier space. Because we know that the central region represents low frequency component and the outer region's high frequency, now we can apply a mask onto the central region and then just let the high frequency signal pass through, which is uh, nothing but the edges, okay? So let's actually go ahead and do that in uh, our spider IDE. And I still have the code left over from our last tutorial where we actually looked at we looked at uh, a synthetically generated sine wave right here. Let me scroll up just to give a quick reminder. Synthetically generated sine wave and then the equivalent uh, Fourier transform of that image. Now, the easiest way, I mean, the applying a Fourier transform is very easy. All you need to do is cv2.dft. That's pretty much it. Okay, and DFT works only on floating point images. So we converted our image into floating 32 and uh, the output will be a complex output, which means we need to uh, extract the magnitude out of this complex uh, number. So that's what we did here, 20 log of cv2.magnitude, that actually gives you the magnitude. And the first part is the real part and the second part is the imaginary part, right? So DFT, and uh, along the way we shifted the DFT from the origin being on the top left to the center. So it's easy for us to visualize things. So on that shifted image, we are extracting the zeroth component, which is the real number, and the first component, which is the imaginary part. That's it. And we calculated the magnitude, and the magnitude spectrum is our FFT that we kind of plotted here. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna build on top of that. So I'm not going to change uh, a lot here. In fact, instead of synthetic image, we are actually using a real image that we ended up uh, demonstrating towards the last uh, uh, ending of our previous tutorial. So I'm going to read the sandstone.tiff image and then calculate DFT on it, again by applying cv2.dft converting these numbers into float 32 and shifting the uh, signal using numpy.fft.fft shift and calculating magnitude. This is exactly same as what we have done in the last tutorial. The only thing now is on this magnitude spectrum, I want to apply uh, or block off all the central regions or central pixels. To do that, there are many ways to do that. You can actually define a square region in the center and then uh, uh, fill it with all zeros, okay? Instead of square, I'm actually defining a circle. A circle, what is the equation of circle? x squared minus plus y squared, right? Equals to some radius. Okay, so that's the equation of circle. So how do we use that? First of all, I'm going to create a mask of all np1s, numpy.1s. So this entire image, okay, this entire image is uh, going to be filled with ones. Well, not this image. In fact, I'm going to create a new array called mask. And that new array will have the same size as my image, image.shape, okay? And I'm going to fill it with all ones. Now, I'll go to the central pixels and fill those with zeros. How do we do that? Now I'm going to find the center, center row and center column. It's nothing but your rows divided by two and columns by two, right? So go to the center row and center column, make that your circle's center, okay? That's what we did. That's my circle's center, okay? And then fill it with a value of zero. So my mask within that area fill all the values by zero. That's all I'm doing here, okay? Now you can also define, uh, fill, uh, do exactly the opposite, fill it with ones, 
okay, which we can test later on. So fillet with once makes it a low pass filter and this is a high pass filter that we are defining right here. So once we do that, once I fill it with all zeros, now I have a mask that has all ones in the image and around the center all zeros. So all I need to do is multiply that with the mask to actually apply the mask. Did I do that here? Uh, so mask area equals to zero, mask is np dot once. So let's keep going down. So now apply the mask and inverse uh, DFT. So the way I actually applied the mask on our DFT shift is by multiplying it by mask, right? So again, going back up, my DFT shift is my uh, uh, basically my Fourier response, okay? So to the Fourier response, I'm going to, at every pixel, multiply it with the pixel from the mask. So anything that's outside, I'm multiplying by one, no change. Anything that's inside around the center, multiply by zero. So I'm masking that out or taking those values out. That's exactly what's going on right here, okay? Once you do that, then convert it back to magnitude spectrum, okay? And so we can plot it, so we can visualize it. There's nothing we're gonna do with it. But then once you have your masked FFT or masked Fourier transform, now go ahead and do inverse Fourier transform because we need to get it, the image back from frequency to the image space. I'm sorry, I just misspoke. This is actually uh, IFFT shift. It's moving the origin back from the center to the corner, right? I mean, before we convert this back into the image space, we have to bring the origin back. Uh, this is undoing of DFT shift, okay? Or FFT shift here. This is exactly opposite of FFT shift. Sorry about that. So here uh, we uh, are moving it back to the origin and then inverse DFT, okay? Which is part of OpenCV. So this is going to be again a complex number, so we have to extract the magnitude. And uh, again, cv2.magnitude and uh, uh, you know our uh, real component and the imaginary component. This may be a lot for you to digest, but, uh, uh, but it comes down to the fact that we have an original image that we are reading and converting to FFT space. Now we created a mask where we fill the centers with zero which means it blocks out the central regions and we multiplied this mask values with the FFT, okay, with the Fourier transformed image. So now we took that Fourier transformed image and then moved the origin back to top left and then inverse Fourier transform to bring it back to the image space. All of this is applied by just uh, applying a function called LPF, like low pass filter, which is probably available in multiple libraries, but this is the guts of it, okay? Now I'm just plotting all the input images and everything so we can have a look at the output. So here, this is our input image. This is our FFT image. Let me move this slightly up so you can see it. This is our FFT image, and this is the mask image. And here is the uh, after inverse FFT. So we are actually detecting the edges uh, over here. Now, depending on the uh, how large or small this component is, your uh, your edges will look different. So, if I actually change this to my uh, radius to be 120 bigger uh, mask. Okay. Now let's see how the edges look like. So now I see a bit of a fainter edges and uh, a fewer edges. And if we change this to 20, a smaller mask. Uh, Oh, fewer edges, but much stronger over there. Okay, I'll let you again play with this on your own images. Now let's actually comment this part and then uncomment this part. Okay, and here the central pixels have value of one. All the other pixels have a value of zero. I believe that's how I started, right? Instead of NP1s, we start with NP0s and let's apply a mask of 100, which means all of the outer side is blocked and it's letting the in. And I asked you this question in the last tutorial, what happens when you do that? The answer is it's a smoothing or a denoising type of uh, uh, application. Okay, so it's almost like Gaussian smoothing. So let's go ahead and apply it. And there you go. So uh, our mask is, uh, the image should not look like this. So I'm a bit curious in terms of why that's happening. Maybe because uh, I, I am uh, mixing up 
the values here, image back, ID, FT. I'm sorry about this. Let's go ahead and figure this out one more time. So what we have is mask and DFT shift multiplied by mask. So everything seems to be okay. Ah, actually, if you look at this filter, you can actually see I'm blocking some of this inner component off and then this is like a donut. Okay, so that's the problem. Why is that happening? That's the reason why I'm seeing a whole bunch of edges here. And the reason that's happening is I also have band pass filter right here. So let's uh, block this off, this part of the code off. Okay, the band pass filter again uh, is blocking this central part. So now we should only have this, uh, the, the, you know, this, uh, the mask for this entire region in the center. Sorry about that again, mistakes happen, but again, you have to identify why and you have to fix them. So here it is. This is how our mask uh, should look like for our, uh, you know, for our uh, uh, low pass filter. So the central regions are gone through and then all the high frequency components are blocked. And as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a smooth uh, version of this image, which looks very nice actually. Okay, so this is how now by adding this band pass filter, like I did by mistakenly uh, the last time, we are actually creating our own different filter shapes. By the way, you can create your own weird shapes for filters uh, and then see how it actually affects. So this is a combination of actually letting only these frequencies uh, through the donut shaped uh, area. And then you get a different types of response. So here is how you can actually play with uh, the Fourier transform and uh, work with the Fourier transformed space to actually process your images in the real uh, in the real uh, uh, coordinate uh, space. So I hope you learned something with this tutorial and then again uh, I hope you found this to be useful and in the next tutorial let's actually uh, work on uh, histogram equalization and contrast limiting histogram equalization and uh, of course uh, keep covering more and more image processing topics. So I hope you're learning uh, uh, you know a lot from these tutorials and please practice and that's the only way you know how things can change or can be applied on your specific images. Thank you very much.